Hi y'all, welcome to my shop for a quick tip on jam chucking. Um, if you watch some of my videos, you know I like to make an awl. I think it's a great project. Um, I've got a, I'll have a link at the end of this the video on turning these awls. Uh, but the handles got to fit. Have got to fit you. And the the one that I like, this one that I use near my lathe a lot, is about two inches in diameter, and it's a really good fit and size. I made some recently, and I was about to donate one to uh, a, a club club raffle, and I picked it up, and it's like, whoa, this is this is just too big and I measured it it's it's two inches and three sixteenths which is not a lot but it's just enough to make it not fit right I picked up another one it's like man it's the same size I measured it and it was two and three sixteenths so it's like no I wouldn't use these so I wouldn't want to put them in raffles so I'm gonna fix it so how do you how do you rechuck this to turn the handle down a little bit and that's what I want to show you today you're gonna to use a jam chuck you're just gonna put some block of wood that you've got uh, softer wood is generally better but I'm using whatever spindle blank that I had in my spindle blank uh, uh, shop now I'm looking for my my safety glasses so I'm going to face this off, make sure it's uh, slightly concave, and I'll do that with my, my spindle gouge. And I think that'll do it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take my all that I'm going to fit and I measured the figure out how I could best chuck it I could chuck it here or I could chuck it here uh, this one same thing but what I figured out was this one I can chuck it uh, with this and three quarters of an inch and then I think the other one I'll probably chuck here by drilling it out using the same jam chuck so let's let's drill a hole three quarters of an inch I'm going to use a Horsener bit, slowing the speed down just a little bit. You know, get this thing down to you know no more than about 600. And I'm going to drill this thing. I probably ought to mark it how deep I should drill it. So I don't need to drill it any more than say right there. I should turn that off, and I'm just going to measure that, and that's, uh, oh, about three quarters of an inch deep. So I'm going to use the uh, etched markings on my drill bit and set this thing at one inch, and then just drill it down. And there we go. Now let's just see how close this, this thing is, but before we do that, we're going to have to drill a deeper hole for the, um, for the shaft to, to fit down in there. So I'm going to use a hand drill, and I think I can, I can fit it right into that dimple, turn the speed up a little bit. I find for me that if, sometimes if I use a tool rest to kind of brace myself on, it makes it a little easier. So I just go in here, just... Find that dimple. There we go. I got it. Now just drive it in. It's wobbling a little bit, so that means it's a little off center, but this thing is a little bit bigger than that all shaft anyway. I'm going to drill this thing all the way through. There we go. So we're going to take this and see how it fits. And it's a little off. Let's see how the other one fits. Remember. And this one looks like it'll fit pretty well. It's actually got, because of the ferrule I put on here, I don't know if you can see that, uh, I turned this down from a plumbing fitting, so it's actually got threads on it. So it'll, it will actually thread in here well enough, I think, to hold this. And whether it'll run true or not, let's see. Uh, it's not running quite as true as I'd like, so I think what I want to do is I want to make this just slightly bigger, so I'm going to do that with a uh, scraper. So I'm going to use my box scraper just to, to put a very slight taper on this. Just a very slight taper. And I think that might do it. Let me round it over to a 
slightly. Let's see how that how that does it. Okay. Yeah. So this one this one's gonna fit right down on there, I think. Let's see if it runs true. That's the real key. That runs true enough for me to uh, turn this and bring it down maybe three sixteenths of an inch. And remind that doing the, going through this process reminds me to be a little more careful in my measurement when I'm making making future all. So I'm going to use my spindle gouge and just round it over a little bit. This is a nice piece of cherry burl on this handle, so I want this whoever gets this thing to really feel good about it. Just bring it around just a little bit. less of a turning demonstration than it is problem solving. Before I finish this, I need to measure to make sure I get it down to that, that two inches that I was striving for. Burn ring on here, that's okay. I can do that for any problem. Now I've had people tell me this is a dangerous way to do it, leaning over the tool rest, but I'm, I'm sorry. You're not going to be, even if it breaks, it's not going to pull me into the, into the turning work. I've had people say, bring it up underneath, you know, whatever works for you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and sand that off, finish it. We don't, you don't need to watch me do that. Okay, I sanded it up to 240. I used some abrasive paste. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I'll put a little uh, in-wax antique oil on that. It'll be good as new. And it, and it just feels so much better in my hand. Now the next one, uh, we're going to try something a little different. It won't quite go in. I measured, let me measure this, let me measure this bead that I've got here. And it's right at one inch. And let me just drill into that a little bit with a one inch drill bit. And see how close that gets to be able to just stick the whole thing in there. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But I'm only going to drill it down there just a little ways. Just so I've got it down in there. I'm going to show you different, you know, thinking on the fly here and trying different things. Yeah, so it'll seat. So now I'm just going to wrap this with some blue tape. And I never can remember which way to wrap it. We're going to wrap it from top to bottom. Like this. And I don't think it's going to take a whole lot. Because it was real close. Yeah, that's good. And that's in there. Let's see. Whoa, not running true though. Again, probably because it tape. Now it's running true. Okay. Now I think what I'm going to do, keep it running true. I'm going to bring up, you know, a soft touch. For those of y'all who've been watching me for a while, you know, you put either wood or but even better HDPE or Delron or something as a tip on your live center, something that won't bar the wood, but it just brings up just a touch of support without leaving a hole. Just again just trying to show you the versatility of of being able to use a a jam chuck to get you out of a jam. Okay. I'm just take this down. I think I'm gonna go ahead and Make some V grooves while I can, while, I, while I've got them marked. And I'm going to go fairly deep because this will also be used for me dimensioning how, how thick, how much I've got to take down. Round it over. 
was a lot softer than that cherry burl. This is a walnut. Walnut that grows down here in the south. I think maybe it's a little grows faster and it's not as hard as walnut in some other parts of the country. But maybe that's me speculating. Even up that hope that lead root just a little bit. Get to match the others. Now all I gotta do is sand it down and I'll be good to go. I'm gonna slow the lathe down. I'm going too fast for sanding. You want to sand at about a third of the speed probably you're turning at. Okay, I'm much happier with the size of these uh, 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 grips, and I hope you find that a useful uh, tip. If you want to find out more about using jam chucks, check out my video here. If you want to learn more about turning all, so these are a great project. There's a, a clip up here as well. And just remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.